Hi friends, welcome to Concepts of Geology online classes. Up to date, we have completed the textures and structures of ore and gang minerals. Now, we can identify the appearance of an ore or we can name the texture or structure which is shown by a mineral by microscopic observation or in hand specimen view. Again, on the other hand, suppose through back calculations, we can identify a mineral which is showing a particular characteristic texture. But apart from the mineral identification and textural characterization, two major objectives of ore microscopy are determination of the order of formation of the minerals, that is the time sequence of formation which is called the paragenetic sequence and the estimation of the conditions under which the minerals have formed or have re-equilibrated. The second one will be discussed through fluid inclusion study in the next class and today we will learn the paragenetic study of ores. Okay, so our objective for today is to complete this one. Okay, so let's move. Now before stating one thing we should clear that the term paragenesis has also been used particularly in some European literature to refer characteristic mineral assemblages. Okay, suppose a particular mineral assemblage in any metamorphic phases. But here we are using it only in reference to sequential formation of minerals. Okay, no confusion should exist in it. Okay, so the term paragenesis means the time sequence of formation. So, in a word, our objective is to identify the mineral which has formed first and which came last into existence. Okay, this is the essence of paragenetic study. Now, although there are no thumb rule or standard method by which we can estimate the paragenesis of a group of associated minerals, but still we can do it by knowledge of our microscopic analysis. I am providing some well practiced procedure to you, but you may find much more with your experience. First one is crystal morphology and mutual grain boundary relationship. The shapes of individual crystals and the nature of the contacts between adjacent grains are often used as a criteria for determining paragenesis. Okay? For example, suppose we have learned on the class a primary texture that euhedral crystals form due to unobstructed growth in liquid medium. So they must have early formed. Okay, so suppose we have a grain within a thin section which have a good crystal shape. Okay, like this one. So they are indicating unobstructed growth in a liquid medium. Okay, so they are early formed. Similarly, the grains with convex faces are interpreted as formed earlier than those with concave faces because the growth of the late formed crystals are restricted within the interstices of the earlier formed grains. Okay, so suppose these are some grains having euhedral nature and you see the late formed grains which will fill these interstices they will have a concave boundaries like this one. But these grains have convex boundaries. So clearly these are early form grains and these are late form grains. But let me clear here that such simplistic interpretations are mostly correct but must be used with cousins. Okay? Certain minerals like pyrite, arsenopyrite, they have their force of crystallization and they form well developed crystals regardless of their position in paragenetic sequence. Okay, so pyrite or arsenopyrite they form equivalent crystals. Now let's move to the second procedure. Second one is coliform banding and growth zoning. Okay, coliform bandings are concentric botroidal overgrowth of fine radiating crystal around an early formed nucleus. Okay, the texture is very common in open space filling, especially in iron and manganese oxides. Okay, the nucleus may be of fragment of wall rock or suppose an earlier formed ore grain. Okay, so suppose this is the nucleus 
and some radiating crystals will be grown like this. So clearly the composition consisting the outermost band is the last form as in this case the growth is radiating outward. Okay, so this band is the youngest and this is the oldest. Fine. Number three is fibrous veins. Fibrous vein systems are common again in open space filling but in low grade metamorphic system. Okay, at higher temperatures the fibers become thermodynamically unstable and get recrystallized into equidimensional polygonal crystals. Okay, so they are very common in sandstones and limestones. Now, in the case of crustiform veins, we have seen that the bands were symmetrical along a center line and the growth was considered inward from the opening wall. But in case of fiber growth, we may have four types of growing mechanism in which two types are very common. Okay, so suppose this is an opening and the growth of the fibrous minerals is taking place inward. So they will grow like this. This is the line of symmetry. Okay, this type of growth is called syntaxial growth. This happens when the composition of the fiber is close to the wall rock. Okay, suppose calcite veins in limestone or quartz veins in sandstone. Here the growth is from wall rock to the center in this direction. Okay. The another one case is antitaxial growth. Here the fiber grows outward from the center. In this case, the composition of the fibers is different from that of the wall rock. Okay. Here we will have a medial line which is the nucleus of the growth. Okay. So suppose this is the opening. We will have a median line like this. And the fiber will grow on this direction like this. Okay, so the growth is outward. This is called antitaxial growth. This is happening when the composition of the fibers are different from the wall rock. Okay, so composition of the fibers are different. And here the compositions are same. Fine. Now see, these fibrous veins may be a good indicator of shear sense. Okay. Suppose in case of the syntaxial growth, we are having shearing like this. This is the opening. This is the line of symmetry in case of syntaxial veins. We are having shear sense like this. Growth is always inward. So what will be the result? The fiber will look like this. So this is the syntaxial growth. If the same situation is happening in case of an antitaxial growth, what will happen? Suppose this is the fracture opening. This is the median line, early form crystals. Shear sense is same like this one. Growth is outward. So this will look like this is an antitaxial growth. So this is the way we have to identify syntaxial growth and antitaxial growth by means of which we will calculate the paragenetic sequence. Okay, so let's move to the next point. This is cross-cutting relationship. From the knowledge of our geological field studies or the law of cross-cutting relationship in stratigraphy, we know that the feature which is cross-cutting another one must be younger. The same logic may be applicable here also. The veinlet that is cross-cutting another veinlet or a crystal or suppose a micro fault which is making offset in a crystal is younger in paragenetic sequence. Okay. So suppose this is a grain and a vein is cross-cutting it like this one. So clearly the grain is older and this vein is younger. Similarly, if a crystal is offset by a fault like this, clearly the grain is older and this fault is younger. But here we should be cautious 
as the phase which is being cross cut may be a replaced one in that case the sequence of paragenesis may be reversed okay so this should not be a replaced grain the next feature is inclusion the phase which is occurring as inclusion within a grain is older okay for example early form oxides are often found as inclusion within the late form silicate okay so suppose this is a silicate grain and we are having inclusions of oxides like this so clearly this oxides are older and this silicate is younger so the logic is included phase is always the older the next feature is very important number 6 is replacement replacement features are very useful in determination of paragenesis clearly the mineral being replaced is older than one replacing it okay since replacement is generally a surface chemical reaction it usually proceeds inwards from the crystal boundary or along fractures okay after the advanced replacement the older replaced phase may be remained as residual island within the matrix of the new phase okay so suppose this is the grain again and this is being replaced by and one another phase so clearly this is the older phase and this is younger so the normal rule is the mineral in the core is older because normally replacement is taking place inward okay the next feature is twinning twinning can be useful in interpretation of both the paragenesis and deformational history of an ore twinning may be formed during initial growth through inversion or as a result of deformation accordingly they are called growth twinning inversion twinning and deformation twinning okay so twinning may be growth twinning inversion twinning or deformation twinning growth twinning has no certain significance in paragenetic studies but in case of inversion twinning we may get an idea that the phase was formed at elevated temperature and then reequilibrated during cooling okay the deformation twin is the most important as suppose some of the grains of a particular mineral is showing deformation twinning while the others are not okay that indicates that twin grains are pre deformational and of course older in paragenetic sequence okay so suppose this is the thin section in which this and this grain is showing a uh, twinning that been deformation twinning and these grains are normal so clearly what is indicative this twin grains are pre deformational okay so they are pre deformational okay so they are definitely older and they are younger fine so these were some common features to study the paragenesis there may have a lot more which you will learn with your experience okay so this is the summary of the class let's have a look on it fine i will not stretch the class more today in the next video we will complete the learning of paragenesis through a real example please be with me share and subscribe the channel and write your views on the comment box or through email thank you for watching goodbye